dear Pentifor The waters of my soul Longing after thee You alone are my heart's desire And I long to worship thee You alone are my strength, my shield To you alone may my spirit yield You alone are my heart's desire And I long to worship thee You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are king I love you more than any other so much more than anything you alone are my strength Desire and I long to worship thee. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and Desire and I long to worship thee. You alone. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone. Desire and I long to worship thee and I long to worship I accidentally hit the button too quick. But welcome to Henderson General Baptist Church where today we get to make that decision. Do I want to worship the risen Savior? Do I really have that desire like those deer longing for that stream? Do I long for that worship of Jesus Christ, our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords? And today I ask you this question. Are you in love with the Savior? For us, I want you to take a moment to realize that as we continue going through this journey of, of online, of in-person, of all of it combined together, to realize that there are moments of our life that we get to worship our risen Savior, and we get to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So today, I want you to take this moment to just slow down, to pray to God. And ask him to let you hear the truth from his word today and help us to focus on worshiping him and him alone. There is coming a glorious day one day when there's not going to be any more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache. 
No more sickness. And we're going to be in heaven with our risen Savior. And I want you to know that there comes that moment of our life that we get to come alive when death was arrested. May death be arrested in your life today. And may you truly get to know the risen Savior. And let him be your King of kings and your Lord of lords. In Revelation 21, verses 3 to 6, it says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and the death and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. Let us pray. Our Almighty God, our Sovereign Lord, our Gracious Father, Lord, we worship you for who you are this very moment. And we just want to thank you, Lord God, because no matter what this life brings to us, no matter how hard the circumstances of this life, Lord, you still give us that hope that we can rely on, that we can embrace, Lord God. That someday, Lord, in that glorious day, where we'll see you face to face, where there will be no pain, no struggles, no mourning, and we're going to enjoy your presence, Lord God, with you. And Lord, this very moment, as we continue to live this life, allow us, Lord God, to express our thanksgiving to you, our gratitude to you, as our act of worship. Lord, we invite you in our midst, minister upon our hearts, we worship you. Christ's name. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry the kind of weight? It was my tomb. When I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures to try to hide It was my tomb Till I met you you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all I know The old man knew Jesus went You 
call my name And I ran out of that creep Out of the darkness Into your glorious day See, I needed rescue, the scene was heavy I need a rescue my sin was heavy, but chains breaks it to weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me to see the sin of heaven. And I was broken, you were my healing, your love is the end that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes were open, cause when you come my name. She's over me 
I want you to think about this morning is the surely goodness and unfailing love of God pursuing your life. Do you see it? Do you feel it? Do you know it? Do you believe that your life, do you really believe you're alive? You know, ultimately in our life, we spend so much time, effort, and energy with bitterness, brokenness, badderness, sadness, and aloneness, with worry and anxiety, that oftentimes we misunderstand and we missee and we don't understand the reality that God's goodness is following us. It's coming after us, and He's pursuing us with everything that He is. So when I think about this and I think about our life and I think about the idea that one day we're going to get to see our Heavenly Father, oftentimes we're not living our life as such. We don't live our life with hope. We don't live our life in a, in a, 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 a sit, setting that we, that we look and we strive after to, to see who this Jesus really is. And oftentimes we look to the, to the areas of this earth to bring us certainty. This world is not going to bring certainty. This world is going to bring chaos. This world is going to bring lies. This world is going to bring fears. And these things are going to happen over and over and over again. But where your focus is and what are you looking at is matters. See, for some of us, we've lost all hope. We don't understand the reality of, of over the last month and a half, I've really honed in on this definition of hope and realizing that hope is most truly itself if it occurs in the context of darkness, suffering, and persecution. I'm pretty certain I asked this question last week, but if not, I'm going to ask it again this week because... Probably we don't remember because everybody forgets about 99%. They say 94%, 93%, but I think it's like 99% of everything that I say on a Sunday is forgotten. <laughs> By lunchtime, probably. But I want you to think about the idea of which one is more dangerous. Persecution or comfort? We as Christians, especially especially 21st century Christians in the United States of America, we desire comfort. We desire comfort in all areas of our life. We desire that comfort that, that, that comes in and, and, and overwhelms us. We want to be comfortable. We want the right temperature. We want the right amount of food. We want the right comfort. We want a, the right place. We want it to be based upon who we are and what we desire at any given moment. Most arguments that happen in this world is because you don't like what's going on. And because I don't like it, 
you must not like it. And if they like it, they got to be something wrong with them because why in the world would they do that? And we go back and forth all the time. So the reality in our life and the thing that I really want to hone in on today as this series comes to a close is let me tell you about my Jesus. See, we've been looking at and following through and talking about Lamentations chapter 3 each week. And uh, the first week I, I used those first set of verses and then I went back to the top and then we went past that and went down a little bit. We're not going to go back over the any farther down, but I do want to read these verses again to you because ultimately I want us to see the three verses that I've honed in on and talked about each week because I have another verse for you today. It's just a few simple words that Jesus said. And Jesus said these words, and they're declared. And the question is, is do you believe those words? And it doesn't really matter if I believe them. It's not going to change what Jesus said. But when I start believing them, it changes what I say. It changes what I do. It changes how I live. It changes how I live my life. It impacts me that I realized that death was arrested and my life began is not just a, a saying, it is the truth of God's holy word. So for us today, as I think about this and we read through these verses, I want you to, to think about the question in your life. Is do you still hope? And whom or in what are you hoping what are you placing your truth of your life in? Because if you recall, we realize that, that it takes faith to have this hope. And when we have faith in Jesus, that, that it changes everything. So for us, as I look at this and I see this and, and we go with it, I want you to ponder upon the question. Do you still hope? Who and what are you hoping in? See, the Bible tells us in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 19, the thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss, yet I still dare to hope. See, the writer of Lamentations is, is still Daring to hope all the stuff that happened before this, all the heartache, all the pain, all the suffering, all the persecution, all the loss. It's got him to the place that he goes, God has abandoned me. He, he doesn't say those exact words, but that's what's happening. And when we, we think this in our life, we start thinking the same kind of things, that the circumstances and the situations of our life, they, they overwhelm us, they, they weigh us down. And as the songs were being sung today, it just it's an uplifting thing for me to, to think about the idea of death being arrested so my life can begin because ultimately without life, I'm dead and without Without life, I will remain dead. And we go, but we're breathing. We, we start life at birth. But the reality is, is what birth are we looking to? That physical birth that has an end date. It's set. It's coming. I don't know when my last breath on this earth is going to take place. I don't know when your last breath is going to take place. I see people getting sick and I see all these things that are going on and I say I still dare to hope. The author goes on as we've read each and every week this month and I read it again. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Do you say that? Say that now. The Lord is my inheritance. Say it with me. The Lord is my inheritance. And, and, and it's easy to say those words. But do you really mean it? Do you really live that life that you go, no, my hope is built on Jesus Christ and nothing else. Nothing 
Because, see, there is no and. There is no, oh, as long as I've got Jesus and. It's not about the and. It's, it's about Jesus. And when Jesus is all you have, you're going to realize that Jesus was all you've ever needed in the first place. And yet so many of us are lost. We're lost mentally. We're lost physically. We're lost spiritually. We're lost in our relationships. We're lost. We feel all alone, even in a crowd. And we forgot the whole idea that my hope is in my inheritance. But we don't live our life that way. We don't live every morning getting up thinking about God is my inheritance. God is the, the reason of, that I get up and, and walk around and do these things. And as Christians, we kind of just dabble in a relationship with Jesus. It's more about what can you do for me, God? Well, what's going to happen for me right now? I need my wants and my desires, my hopes, my dreams to come true right now. But when it's set aside or based solely on what you're going to get from this earth, it will never be lasting. So can you say it? The Lord is my inheritance. When that phrase becomes the, the mantra of your life, then you're going to see what Jesus said and why it's so true. He goes on and he says, The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. So it is good to wait quietly for the salvation from the Lord. And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. And then I read one more verse further down in verse 40. Instead, let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. I want you to think about in your life today about the three verses that we focused in on this past week, this past month. And when I think about these verses, I put them all up at the same time. These are important verses. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Psalm chapter 23, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. These are the main verses we've talked about over the last three weeks, which leads us to the verse today that we talk about with Jesus. The fact is that the majority of people right now are fighting the wrong battle. They're fighting for their earthly existence. They're fighting for their earthly freedoms. They're fighting for, 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 for equality of themselves of what we want when we want how we want that there's no longer a, an understanding of what truth is they don't even know truth you see there's so many lies that are spread on the internet these days so much stuff that to find out if it's actually true almost impossible now so when we think about this and we look at this, I want you to ask the question, is God my inheritance? Is the Lord my inheritance? If the Lord is my inheritance, if, if that is what I'm going after, then I'm going to place my hope in that. And all these other things that I'm getting so tore up about and so bent out of shape over and, and so upset over that, that, that those things, yeah, it's okay from a human standpoint to, to get a little bit rattled up a little bit. But when we focus so solely on that and saying my only joy is going to be if this happens, my only joy is going to be if that happens, the, my only joy is going to be if this happens or my joy will be recovered if this happens. You're going to always be living a life without the true hope. See, we have hope in so many things these days, but we're lost. That's why we're walking around and we're, and we're living inside our heads so boggled up, so chaotic in our minds that we don't see that God is singing over us. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 for the Lord your God is living among you. 
He is a mighty Savior. He, he will take delight in you with gladness. He, with His love, He will calm all your fears. How are your fears going? See, God is here to change the trajectory of how you think. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 tells us this, that he, he wants to transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And yet many of us never change one thought. We think our way is right, and that's it. And oftentimes we live a life filled with people, especially our generation today, that says there is no truth. There's no absolute truth. That's what they say. And we walk around in this mindless, soulless, spiritualist journey of life, desiring what this world can give us more than the creator of the universe wants to give us. You see... The creator of the universe, the creator of the stars, the creator of the human beings, of, of all the living creatures, the, the breath of life that we've talked about this year, uh, earlier this year, and we, and we see this, we understand this, and we see that, that he has this love for you to calm all your fears, but yet what fears keep raising up? What fears keep raising up? These fears that hold us captive, that keep us from being alive. He says, he will rejoice over you with joyful songs. See, our King of kings and our Lord of lords, he loves you so much that, that the Bible tells us surely his goodness, God's goodness, the, the creator of everything, the inheritance of my life, the hope of all to me. He is pursuing me every day of my life. What about him is pursuing me? His goodness and his unfailing love. They're following after me and they keep coming one right after the other after the other. They keep coming, but yet we keep complaining and grumbling and moaning and groaning and griping and arguing and wondering, why me? Why me? Where is the placement of your hope? When it is in the King of kings and Lord of lords, you see that he's singing over you, that your fears are calm because you realize my inheritance is not this earth. It's not what my mom and dad are going to leave me for, for money-wise. It's not all those things. And, and don't get me wrong, we are, we are to, to work. We are to, to, to make a living. All of these things are part of our everyday life, our everyday existence. But my world does not come crashing down when something in this life doesn't happen the way I want when I want how I want like I'm a like I'm a six-month-old grandchild of mine high speed come apart when I don't have my food quick enough or I don't get the diaper change quick enough and, and all this because ultimately I want my comfort see what we we fail to realize about our Jesus is that even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ Jesus to be holy and without fault in his eyes. We've talked about these verses. Each week has been this has been the main verses. So we go to the main verse for us today, and I ask you once again, who or what is the hope of your inheritance? Is Jesus really the hope. If he is, he's going to calm your fears. You're going to see and feel him singing over you. You're going to be excited about life and going out and sharing that gospel message of Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? See, when we think about this and we read this and we see these verses here, I go back to verse 1 and, and I, I ask that question of you. Are your, is your heart troubled? Do you really trust in God? Do you trust in that hope in Him? Are you really alive? I keep saying it, 
and I'm going to say it over and over again. One of the major struggles we have is that we're in more trouble, not because of persecution these days, but because of comfort. That people hop from one church to another church. They stop going to church because the preacher preached too long. The preacher didn't preach loud enough. The preacher preached too soft. The preacher did this. The preacher did that. The comfort of the, the sanctuary was too hot. The sanctuary was too cold. The, the service was too long. The service was too short. And Okay, nobody's at saying too much about me preaching too short or, or the service is too short. I don't hear that. But will you get what I'm saying? It's this idea of these troubles that we keep going, but we're not trusting our life in Jesus Christ and we're looking for our comfort. That's why so few people these days actually serve the Lord in and through a local congregation, that, that local body that we get up and do something for the glory of God. It's always stated that some 10, 15, 20 percent of the people are doing 80, 90 percent of the jobs in the church. Why? Because everybody is looking for their comfort and they're looking at what they can get when they come to church, which gives them the spectator view. And when you have the spectator view, you're just seeing your troubles and you're wondering, is anybody going to take care of my troubles? And not am I going to serve the Lord? Not am I going to trust God? Not am I going to come in to serve the Lord? And see, we don't live our life understanding that God has gone to prepare a place for us. It's important to see that God is gone. Jesus has gone and he is preparing that place for us. And, and what I, I really kind of wonder what this really means and, and what that looks like. But he's preparing you for the moment that he comes back. And one of these days he's going to come back. Are you ready for that day? I, I read it again. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? I read on to get to this verse because oftentimes this verse, these verses are read at funerals. But so many of us are troubled in our hearts, not from a death of a family member only, but from life. And it's because we're not looking to Jesus Christ as our inheritance. We're not appreciating the fact that one day Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And one day he's going to return. And when he returns, it's going to change everything like that. It'll be faster than that. When everything is ready, he says, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do you realize today that this verse is overwhelmingly important for your life? Jesus says four things here, and they're vitally important. These four things change, wreck, overwhelm the way we see this earth because we think we're the way. We think we can find the way. We think we know the truth. I even hear people say, there's no such thing as absolute truth. There is no, uh, sir, there is no absolute truth. <laughs> and they laugh about it. And I go, do you realize that when you make a statement like that, that what you just said can't be true? I know that's very deep and thought, the, uh, theoretical in, in thinking about it, but think about it. When someone says there is absolutely no truth, there is no absolute truth. They're, they're being absolute with that statement. So if their statement is true, that means their statement can't be true. I don't want to get into a philosophical debate. 
what I want to ask the question is, is the Lord your inheritance? Do you look every day to the day that Jesus returns? Do you look for that mansion, that, that house, that, that mansion, the, the, the many rooms, the, the many mansions that he has in heaven, the thing of, of being able to be there in the presence of God forever? See, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. I want you to ask yourself, who is the truth in your life? Who is the way in your life? And do you really live life? See, for us today, as we think about these things and we think about how we manage through this and let me tell you about my Jesus that I, I want you to be focused upon the reality of those four things and what he says he says I am that I am statement is vitally important anyone in that area anyone in that era would have known what this means this I am it would take them back to the Exodus event where Moses was at the burning bush and he's like, hey, who am I supposed to say sin? Give me a name. Give me something to tell them I've, this is just not about me. And he says, I am has sent you. So Jesus is now saying, I am. Make no mistake about it. Jesus is not claiming to be a prophet. Jesus is not claiming to be a, 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 a disciple. Jesus is not claiming to be a, a good preacher or a good human being. Jesus is stating forth the very fact, I am. He's meaning, I am he, I am God. So when we see this and we understand this, we understand that my inheritance is the Lord, is the Lord my inheritance. If that is the case, then I'm going to place my hope in the Lord. I'm going to place my hope in the great I am who says I am the way. I think about in my life the time that Heather and I some time ago got, got lost in Lexington, Kentucky. We went to a University of Kentucky Wildcats basketball game. This was before Google Maps. This was before Apple Maps. This was before GPS. I'm not even sure we may have had a cell phone. If we did, it was definitely one of those flip phones. We were not texting on it. There was no internet on it. There was none of that kind of stuff on it. Uh, but what, what we did was, was I'd part at, at uh, uh, Rupp Arena and we parked in such a spot that when we come off the road I said all I got to do is just head right back out and I'll get right back on that same road it'll take us right back but when we got after the game it was dark and I went to go that direction but the security guards go no you got to go that way and they took us around the parking lot and put us out on a different road. I didn't know north, south, east, west. I didn't know which way I was supposed to go. And it may have even been a one-way street at that point. I don't remember. I know some 20 minutes later, we're still in Lexington or somewhere. I didn't know. And Heather's like, Chad, just pull over and ask for directions. I'm like, I'm not going to ask for directions. I didn't say this out loud, but back then I was thinking, men don't ask for, we don't need directions. I know directions, yet we'd been lost for 20 minutes. And she says, let me get out of here, pull into that gas station. I'm going to go get directions. As she's getting directions, I'm looking in there. This woman's pointing that way. This woman's pointing this way. She's pointing this way. Then she's pointing that way. I was looking, I was like, there's no way in the world she's going to come out with proper directions. She comes out. I said, so where are we supposed to go? And Heather goes, I have no clue what she just said. She pointed every which way to get back to the interstate. And I look around and I see the building in Lexington, this big building. It had blue lights. It lit up the sky, but it was way away. It was getting really small. So I said, there it is. I'm just going to go towards that. 
had no directions. I just got on and I finally got back to that building, got back to Rupp Arena, found the road we were on and I made it home. The real question is, is your, are you allowing the great I am to be the way of your life? Are you going the way that he tells you to go? Are you going the directions? Are you going where he tells you to go? Are you allowing him to be the truth of your life? See, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. The truth is that he is the truth. And Jesus said earlier in John, John chapter 8, I think it's verse 32, that, that the truth will set you free. But what is it about the truth when you listen to and follow his instructions, when you obey the truth of God's holy word? What you see and what you have in that moment is the understanding that as that happens, he is the revelation of God in human form. So we get to see him and he says, I am the way, the truth. So when someone says, oh, Jesus is just a good man, he's not a good man. <laughs> Jesus is either God or he is a false witness, false person, false liar, because he is saying, I am. He's making that statement. God, I'm your inheritance. I'm your savior. I am the way. There is no way. If you're not following Jesus, you're lost. If you're not following his, the word of God, you're, you're missing out on the understanding that you don't have truth. If you don't have the great I am, if you don't have the way, if you don't have the truth, then there is no life that you're living. How many Christians am I seeing today that are feeling bogged down, anxiety-ridden, worry-driven, floating from here to there, wanting their greatest desires fulfilled in this earth, but they don't see their great inheritance is God. They don't have a desire to truly follow after Jesus. They just have a desire to show up enough that when something happens, they can say, I do this or I do that, and I need this and I need that. Yet some 20% of Christians today probably 10, are doing about 90% of the service within our churches today. And the rest, they just show up and they move on. And they don't see that their inheritance is going to come back one day. And they wonder why they feel alone inside. They're not serving God. They wonder why they've lost their way, because they're not being the salt and the light of the earth. They wonder why it is that they feel so much fear because they're not searching after God. They wonder why they, they get so caught up and, and they don't even think about it, but they just get on Facebook and, and I see it. I see all these people posting all this stuff about masks, about vaccines, about this, about government that and government this and, and this and that and the school this and the school that. And I don't say, see these same people with the passion and the purpose of spreading the gospel message of Jesus Christ that they realize that one day Jesus is going to be returned and all of these things they're not going to matter they're not going to matter and yet we're filled with fear and turmoil and lies and abandonment and and unforgiveness and bitterness and badderness and grumbling and complaining and we miss out on the most important thing in life see the bible tells me this in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. See, for you, for me, I ask you the question, what is the way you're following? What is the truth 
that you live your life by? What is that guiding light in your life? And do you really have life and life more abundantly that only Jesus can give? You see, Jesus isn't a way. Jesus isn't some truth. Jesus isn't part of life. Jesus is the great I am. I am way. I am and me is the Greek word. It is a present tense verb that's always active. I am. I'm the guy. I am God. I am your inheritance. I am the creator of the universe. I am the creator of life. I am the sustainer of life. I am the giver of life. And yet you walk around in fear and turmoil, wanting all of these things that this earth can give. And when they don't happen, you can't get past that. And you've lost your way. You've lost your way physically. You're not eating healthy. You're eating junk all the time, and, and we, we try to find comfort in that. We're, we're not healthy mentally. Why? Because our focus is on the things of this earth, and they're not on God, and it, it puts us in disarray. We're not healthy spiritually. Why? Because we have not allowed Him to be the way of our life, and He's not the way of our life. Not only that, He's not the truth of our life. And if He's not the truth of our life, then we're living a life that's not alive. It's impossible. And for anyone who, who speaks truth without love doesn't understand what our Heavenly Father is doing because ultimately I want us to be reminded that surely God's goodness and His unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. His love is pursuing you. So I ask the question of you today. Is Jesus the way of your life? Is Jesus the truth? Are you searching after him? Is it your desire to really be alive today? If you want that desire and you have that desire to be alive today, his name is Jesus. See, the grace of God, the inheritance of the Lord, the way of Jesus, the truth of the Holy Word of God is what gives us life. And it's Jesus. See, the truth that shall set you free, it's not some statement in court. The truth of what will set you free is listening to and following the words of Jesus Christ, who is the truth. You want to be rescued today? You want your fears to start subsiding? You want your anxiety to change directions? Who's your focus? Where's your inheritance? It is time for us to stop going down the wrong path for our life mentally, physically, spiritually, and relationally. It is time for us financially to stay focused on who Jesus is for our life and allow him to be the great I am, my inheritance, God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is my way, he is my truth, and he is my life. And my whole goal in life is to get to the end of my life having done what God wanted me to do. And no matter what happens in and through me, yes, my financial statements, my, my, my mental health, my physical health, my spiritual health, my relational health, and all of these things that happen in and around me, sometimes I miss an exit. But I don't stay going down that wrong road. We reroute it. And we go back to the Lord. The very fact of what Lamentation said, let us turn back. To the Lord. So may we take this moment to let our desires be about Him and Him alone.
desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Discipleship call on your life this week. I want you to think about these three questions. How is Jesus your way? How is Jesus your truth? How is Jesus your life? And then I want you to ask this question. How are you salt and light? That comes from our Matthew passage from Wednesday night in our Bible study in Matthew chapter 6, but those verses are in Matthew chapter 5. I want you to think about Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. I want you to think about Psalm 23, verse 6. I want you to think about these verses. And I want you to think about who's your inheritance. Jesus was very clear to us today. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and also trust in me. So this morning, as we leave from this place, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. 
And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. It's in the name of Jesus Christ I pray this. Amen.